I'd like to introduce Martin Steph Heck to you all. Martin has come here today with a unique story to tell, a story about hope, a story about his family, a story about the unsung heroes of the past and of the heroes of the future. He is going to be talking to you this morning, allowing you to have a chance to discuss with each other, um, to reflect. Reflect especially on the message of this year's Holocaust Memorial event theme, which is Don't Stand By. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for coming along. This um, is not going to be fun. It's, it's too deep, too, too serious, and for me, far too personal a story um, to be fun as such. But I hope you find it interesting. I hope you find it practical in your own life. And I, and I hope you find it useful um, to think about your own place in this world um, and the place of those who are maybe in far less fortunate positions than we who are lucky enough to be living in Scotland. I'm Martin Stepik and today I was discussing with school pupils from various schools in uh, South Lanarkshire the challenge of the Holocaust and the wider genocide and mass murders in, in human history and it's very important in my own life because my father, his two younger sisters and his mother were taken um, by the Red Army to the labour camps in Siberia. My father came from Poland um, when he was 17. Um, he, the war broke out, Second World War, and Poland was invaded almost simultaneously by the Germans under Hitler and the uh, uh, Soviet Union under Stalin. My dad lived in the East, and within a few months, all the family except my grandfather, who was in hiding in the resistance, um, were removed from their home, put in a cattle truck, and taken up to the Arctic Circle in Siberia, uh, a journey of uh, three weeks in a train, um, during which they were given food three times. And in a nutshell, my grandfather died in the resistance, my grandmother died of starvation, and that's why this is very, very real for me, very, very personal. My family were Polish Catholics, they weren't Jewish, which is one of the first lessons I think to learn from today is the Holocaust is primarily thought of as being the disaster, the, the cataclysmic um, annihilation of the Jewish people, which is the primary story. But there were many, many other victims, and we'll talk about that too. I think it's vital that the future generation, our pupils, young people, understand what we're capable of, both the awful destructive side and also the other side of it, the, the fact that people lost their lives, risked their lives to save people. Um, so there's, there's two equally poignant sides of, of this whole story of, of the Holocaust and the, the wider loss of life in the Second World War. And if children don't learn these things, then what they'll get is skewed views from media, from social media, about current situations like the, the terrible tragedy in Syria and, and the, the refugees coming to Europe just now. What I'd like you to do is spend a couple of minutes again just seeing if you can, what your thoughts are comparing the current situation with the refugees and the immigrants coming into Europe and comparing it with what you've just heard so far. We think that because there is no real need for comparison because even though the uh, situations are fairly different, uh, the circumstances in which the things are happening are almost nearly exactly the same. What would you do? A Jewish person or a Jewish family in the middle of the night knocks on your door. They're fleeing the ghetto, they're fleeing the death camps, they're fleeing the trains that are taking them to certain death and they say, please take us in, please help us. Martin asked us to have a discussion about um, what would happen if a Jew came to our door asking um, for protection and to know that they were in a situation to choose to protect them but put themselves and their family at risk was a really hard thing to discuss and a lot of us were saying it's all well and good talking about it and making a decision about what we, do, should, be, what we should do now but if it was to happen to us and when they were actually at our door, it would be a completely different situation and 
we'd have a completely different take to it. I think that we have a duty to both educate about the dark side of human nature and also to cultivate inside each of the pupils' hearts a sense of kindness um, and altruism. It's Because without that, we're nothing. So all the Poles who'd been freed were rushing out and trying to beg off the Russian civilians, who didn't have much either. So my aunt Danka, the youngest, was left to take care of my grandmother, and they hadn't eaten for a week by this time. They were probably about that from dying of starvation. This woman wearing a big fur coat, classic Russian sort of hat on, furry hat on, and she bent down and she threw something hard at Danka just across the railway tracks. And Danka ducked, she didn't know if it was a rock or whatever, and she dug but she caught it, and it was a big, big loaf of bread, probably bigger than the size of a human head. And she looked up to thank the lady. The lady was gone. The theme of the kindness of strangers, when Martin was talking about how the stranger handed a loaf of bread, like I think that's an extraordinary story because a stranger to do that, to give up something that they could use to save their own life, to give to a family who were dying, it's a really major thing. And it's, it's taught me a message because if we were all to work together, we could make a change to what the situation is today with the migrants. And although we think that it isn't going to affect us, it will eventually. What to learn? Genocide is part of human history. But it's not just about the Nazis killing the Jews, sadly. And we are not immune to being so persuaded to be part of that, to be part of the perpetrators. So protect your mind against destructive and blinkered forces. And the idea of others that are different from you, lesser than you, is a poison that can easily seep into a human mind. Just want to leave that thought with you. And I want to dedicate this to my grandmother. Born in Poland, buried in Tehran, 40 years old, starvation and exhaustion. But she, her life was saved for three years by the kindness of strangers. Thank you very much.